Big Bang Shot Down. Real model of the universe and cause of gravity is here now. Everybody wins when real science prevails over ignorance and pretense. I hereby certify under penalty of death that the current theories of physics and cosmology are based on a combination of bad inference and fraud. The, the cosmic expansion model by Foos Research released in 2020 is the first and only correct model of the universe. It kills Einstein and the Big Bang, thank God. Be the first to understand how the universe truly works. First of all, some scientific facts you must be familiar with or bail out now. That is the Doppler effect and Newton's laws of gravitation. If you understand these well, you're in good shape. All right, let's go. This is the real deal and a serious challenge to governments for endorsing and promoting scientific fraud of relativity and the Big Bang myth. So carefully follow the stepwise logical proof of the cosmic expansion model. You'll be glad you did. If willing, you too will be among the first in history to be delivered from the delusions of modern physics and know how the universe truly works. I have no budget or other means for hiring professional animators. Animators, so don't get offended by minor misalignments or errors in the illustrations. The illustrations do hold the key to proper understanding, so proceed slowly and pay close attention. In this first illustration, the fixed coordinates outside the universe are shaded in yellow. Note that the physical universe is extremely porous. The granularity you see represents particles of matter spread more or less evenly throughout. A matrix that is essentially infinite. So it's important to know that every particle of matter, no matter how small, has a boundary to the outer dimension and is also expanding at a rate proportional to its own mass. Note that with true cosmic expansion, dimensions expand into an external dimension, but there is no effect on dimensions or conditions within the universe. And this is what you have to keep in mind. The universe can expand at any rate and we wouldn't know it, except for certain things that we're going to talk about. So at this point in the illustration, there is no force of gravity. Gravity will be fully explained later, but do not attempt it until you fully grasp the phenomena of redshift and dimensions and how they work with uniform cosmic expansion as we illustrate here. Let's begin with an important definition. Expansion of space in this model is true cosmic expansion, where every point in space expands. Not like the most recent analogy by cosmologists of raisins that are surrounded by rising bread dough. In the correct first cosmic expansion model, raisins will expand as well. They do occupy space. In fact, in the correct model, the dough is inert and without mass, it is only the raisins which expand in proportion to the mass of each raisin. This is the only manner in which the universe expands. With the overall frame of reference of the universe as a whole, dimensions as we know them are fixed. There is no possibility any sort of Big Bang could have occurred. As you will know if you stick with this video and, and pay attention to what I have to tell you. So the analogy of a box, the universe is actually a sphere, is it not? But the analogy of a box makes it easier to explain the crucial connection between clock speed, frequency of light, and the dimensions of length. So this relationship is of major importance in a matter of scientific fact. The nature and correct definition of a meter is the distance traveled by a specific number of wavelengths 
of a specific spectrum over a second of time. Of course, it should be obvious that length and time are closer than usually thought. Distance has no meaning without time. They're two sides of the same coin. This is why you see the yellow clock affixed at the end of each ruler. The ruler is at the bottom and we can call this rectangle that encloses this area a box. And you'll note that the farther we get away from Earth, the larger the box expands, the larger the ruler gets, and we'll notice that the clock also increases by the same amount. So within this box, there is no change in dimensions that can be perceived. Note that light travels the same speed without change in wavelength at a constant gravitational potential. Every box represents a different gravitational potential. The force of gravity is equal throughout. So each frame is of the same color because this is the color that is perceived from within the box. Okay, so if we start with blue, we're just expanding uniformly. If we, if we want to talk about leaving the Earth, we would travel through these sequence of expanding boxes, or we might say expanding space. And as we do so, the spectrum of light is preserved within by the increase in clock speed. You remember the definition of a meter, or say the definition of any unit of length, is the fixed number of wavelengths of a certain spectrum of light over a period of a second. And so, in order for this to remain a foot, or 12 inches, as, we, as it expands in our own frame of reference, the clock must increase in proportion, or it's impossible for it to be a, a meter. The natural definition of length is the number of wavelengths that are traveled over a specific period of time. So length and clock speed are really two sides of the same coin. There is, however, a very curious observation that tells us that space doesn't just shrink or swell in the vicinity of mass, but that the universe is in fact expanding. And this is the notorious redshift. I use a single word here, redshift, because it is an ubiquitous and crucially important phenomenon. And we'll investigate this. To see how it works, we place an object, the mass of Earth, at a distance on the right side of each frame, and another cel celestial body uh, twice the size of Earth on the left side, as you, can, as you can see. These are hypothetical celestial bodies. Uh, the one down here in the middle, that's Earth. If all things are receding at the same rate, it wouldn't be possible to know there's a redshift. Isn't that right? Because the color of light stays the same in your own, rate, in your own frame of reference. And everything is the same going backwards. I mean, things are shrinking as they go backwards, but they all shrink together. So you, we shouldn't be seeing a redshift, at least not with uniform expansion, or maybe everything is expanding and somewhat redshifted, in which case we wouldn't know there was any difference. But if you look here on the left side, the mass that is twice as large as the mass on the right side is redshifted twice as much as the object on the right. And this is because this is what the physicists call gravitational redshift. The Earth is shaded a paler red because it is receding away from Earth at a rate r corresponding to a mass of one. But the object on the left is twice the size, of, twice the size, and shows twice the degree of Doppler redshift. It's receding twice as fast because it has twice as much mass. 
If all things receded at the same rate, it wouldn't be possible to know there was a redshift. But plainly, the rate of Doppler recession is proportional to mass. However, in our local frame of reference, there is no measurable increase in distance with time for either object. You see, they're fixed as far as we're concerned. They're the same distance away, even though they're traveling away at different rates, all we see that indicates that difference is a stronger redshift for bodies of greater mass. As cosmic space as we have defined it expands, objects do recede away from each other. But since our measuring instruments expand along the same path, distances according to our measures remain fixed. And this is important. They're expanding away in cosmic space, but all we know about that is there's a redshift. Physicists deny there's any kind of movement or Doppler shift or recession. They just call this gravitational redshift. But we can see that when we do have cosmic expansion and objects are moving away, we see the same effect, but distances remain fixed between those objects and the planet that we're observing it from. If you're new to this, the illustration should convince you that it's a fact, and if it doesn't, you need to ponder this more until you get this firmly in your mind. So, because the degree of redshift is proportional to mass, physicists call this gravitational redshift. Just giving it a name without really explaining it. They are unfortunately blind to the fact that all such redshift is in fact Doppler on the cosmic scale. So explaining it away by giving credit for the prediction of gravitational redshift to Einstein was a bad move. It was a wrong turn. In this illustration, we can see clearly that there is no such thing as gravitational redshift, only the rational alternative that objects are receding away due to expansion on the cosmic level as seen from outside the universe. If you still don't understand these concepts, it's time to bail out now. There's no point in wading through a long video that you don't understand. So uh, these are based on scientific facts, these things that I'm showing you. These are things that are known to happen. So in the pound Repka experiment, Einstein is praised for, predict for predicting that clocks run more slowly at lower gravitational potentials. The clocks are running more slowly out here, and they're running faster out here. Okay. But we plainly see that all the clocks are, in fact, running at the same rate corresponding to their respective changes in length. Clocks run more slowly with gravitational density, only in keeping with shrinking units of length shown by associated rulers. This is a fact of science, not simply an observation by a bureaucratic hierarchy. In the example in this, in the book, in my book Upperland, we see that Einstein's formulas cannot explain these things. They do not explain them. But here we have a perfect, rational, and correct explanation. However, at first this great idea is shot down by the fact uh, that it was early established that distances and clock speeds are fixed from frame to frame. Even if objects were receding with expanding space, light would travel the same path in each direction and no redshift would be observed. Pause for reflection. The big question is how could a Doppler redshift on the cosmic, cosmic scale be observable within the universe when distances are fixed and the path of light between bodies is purely a local experience. Please ponder the video over a cup of coffee. Unlike the famous bogus twin paradox, there's a perfectly rational and correct answer. This prior illustration might help you. Notice that no matter how large the universe gets, the distance of a ruler is still the same. Distances are fixed, clock speeds are fixed. 
So if there is an object that is expanding on the cosmic level, we won't see that. Everything will look the same to us, even if objects are receding away. So back again to this illustration, and it's of great importance to verify that the answer isn't just my idea. It's based on the facts of science and experiments cited herein. It was that sequence of logical steps that led us here. So there can only be one correct answer to this glaring contradiction. How can objects remain at a fixed distance from Earth and still exhibit a Doppler redshift? And as we see, when objects move away in the cosmic sense and space expands, that expansion is not visible to us within. It isn't a matter of experience either. As the universe expands, everything in it remains fixed, at least if it expands on the cosmic level. Objects really are receding away from us, but because we're inside the box, we don't see that. Okay, this is really important because this is the key to understanding the universe as it really is and shooting down the Big Bang. So far now, we have this uniformly expanding universe expanding on the cosmic level because rulers and clocks are expanding and we're expanding along with it. And objects are still shifted to the red to a degree to pro to a degree proportional to their respective mass. All observers see these celestial bodies as fixed in distance but emitting red shifts as if they were receding because they are receding in the cosmic sense. This doesn't match any known observations, however. Remote observers see an increasing redshift with distance. Don't tell anybody, but in this model, there is no gravity. In this one, everything exhibits redshift to varying degrees, depending on their mass, but all float out there at fixed distances. If it seems like I'm making any of this up to suit my own ideas, trace back and remind yourself that this concept is based purely on the facts that are verified by experiments and common sense. And these meanings have been covered over by attributing the results of experiments to relativity and continually claiming that relativity and Einstein predicted or explained these things when it obviously isn't the case once you dig into them. Gravity is left out of this model, so far anyway, and as both Newton and Einstein confessed, they didn't understand the cause of gravity either. So the first cosmic expansion model is just as dead as the standard model, and we haven't really accomplished very much. Well, we have, haven't we? We've shown that if things are expanding in a cosmic way, proportional to their mass, we will see the redshift of objects that we do see that is called gravitational redshift, and these objects are fixed in relation to the Earth. So let's go back to this first illustration where light is progressively redshifted as it leaves Earth. So what's different about this illustration? Well, instead of all of the rectangles being of the same color, we start out with a blue color at Earth, and as we travel away from Earth, we see this gradually shift towards the red. Now this, of course, is called redshift. We saw it with uniform expansion for objects of greater or lesser mass. So this is what we're looking at here is the redshift from planet Earth or any celestial body. Any light leaves any celestial body, it will accelerate and shift towards the red all at the same time in direct proportion. So that's what we're seeing here. Although these objects are still redshifted in the same way. So this is what we would see if there is such a thing as gravity and 
we will see that light is accelerating away from the Earth, and these objects are actually accelerating away from us to some degree, depending on their distance from us or from each other. So expansion actually does accelerate. So we see here that there are just two things different in this illustration than the last. One is the progressive redshift away from Earth, and also now we have a force of gravity. Being bombarded with Einstein's constancy of light C makes the brains of the masses blind to the fact that as light leaves the Earth, it is not only redshifted, redshifted but accelerates, not on the local level, but as seen from a remote, by a remote observer who's watching the light shift towards the red. And not only does it accelerate, but it accelerates at exactly the same rate of the Doppler shift equal to the accelerating rate of falling bodies on Earth. So if you have g equal to 9.8 meters per second per second, that's the rate of fall near the surface of the Earth, at that point there will be a redshift of light escaping Earth and it will accelerate in exactly the opposite direction at exactly the opposite rate. It's like a mirror image. This is a fact that must be pondered very carefully. Gravity attracts, it doesn't repel. Yet something propels light away from Earth at the very same rate that bodies fall in the opposite direction. Yet we have already established, and as well-known observations prove, that gravitational redshift is equivalent to cosmic expansion as measured by light that travels outside the constraints of physical dimensions, while distances on the physical level remain fixed. You might start to feel a little bit uncomfortable with these strange new insights, so carefully retrace your steps and come back again if need be. Let's talk more about how accelerating expansion causes gravity. Now in this Illustration in this depiction, if you imagine yourself letting go and falling, the force of gravity will pull you at an increasing, accelerating rate towards the planet Earth until you hit with a thud or a big bang. And at the same time, if you were to shoot a beam of light away from planet Earth, it would accelerate away from Earth at the very same rate of falling objects, of objects that are falling towards the Earth. So we see that objects, if they're expanding at an accelerating rate, which they are, that that acceleration of expansion is equivalent to the force of gravity in the opposite direction. Again, it has always amazed me that something as odd as light accelerating away from Earth at the opposite rate of falling bodies has never sparked major ongoing discussion. <laughs> Who cares? So we have already proved that gravitational redshift is of Doppler origin as seen from outside the universe and measurable only from outside the universe. So we shouldn't have to ask what the cause of gravity is. Gravity is the pushback from the accelerating expansion of space into an outer fixed dimension as face faithfully witnessed by a beam of light between any two points that matches the relative rates of expansion between them and overall cosmic expansion cancels out in all directions so the degree of redshift between any two points yields a Doppler rate of recession matching precisely the gravitational potential between them. If you practice thinking about this, I guarantee you will get more comfortable with it because this is the truth about our universe. Believe me, it's worth the effort. Oh, this is Newton's third law, isn't it? Every action creates an equal and opposite reaction. 
Oh, this is indeed the holy grail of physics, the cause of gravity, so mark your spot and know that we're 100% correct. The cosmic expansion model of the universe by yours truly hits the target the human species has been looking for throughout history. We really should talk a little more about the cause and true meaning of time. The world lacks a firm grasp on the meaning of time. Yep. All sorts of crazy stuff, uh, time travel, going backwards and meeting your father-in-law or something. But let's ponder again this illustration where clocks run just as fast as ruler expands, as we see in our familiar illustration here of frames of reference. Note that without distance, there is no time. And unless distance changes from point to point, there can be no rate of time. We're talking about distance, cosmic distance. We're talking about the rulers that shrink or expand. When they shrink or expand, the clock runs faster, runs slower or faster, along with it. And this is a crucial fact. That you can't have rulers without clocks, and you can't have clocks without rulers. So clocks are not frozen back on Earth, but near, neither would they move forward unless the universe as a whole were expanding. This may be a little hard to understand, but it's true. So the passage of time on your watch is mostly a measure of overall expansion of the universe, which is modified slightly by the effects of local expansion that we see as gravitational redshift by the physicist. Your clock wouldn't run very fast on, well, it would run slower on Neptune or Jupiter, of course, than it does on Earth. And this is, this is what these, this time dilation is really all about. This twin paradox of Einstein's is complete bullshit, okay? Let's call it what it is. Excuse my language, but that's what it is. This time shrinks or swells in proportion to the strength of the gravitational field or the rate of expansion of space in that vicinity. And that's what you need to understand that these bodies that or even even uh, galaxies which are receding away from us and are receding away from us they are um, doing so because of expansion and the acceleration of that expansion is the force of gravity that is that, that is field inside the universe, that is felt inside the universe. So, this illustration is a good example how the hands on a clock cannot move without cosmic expansion taking place on some level. Time and distance are sides of the same coin and neither can exist without cosmic expansion. Try to understand how difficult it is for me to convey these concepts because nothing could be more important than re removing the deception of the Big Bang and relativity so that we can move science out of what really amounts to the dark ages. So please be patient with me. Go back over this video many, many times and ask questions. And uh, I just don't get that many views. It's very unfortunate, uh, but help me in any way that you can. Well, maybe we should address the matter of age and origin of the universe while we're doing this video. If, as we now know for certain, that all points in the universe are expanding at a terrific accelerating rate on the cosmic dimension while dimensions within our sphere must remain fixed um, and we experience them as being fixed because they are the only reason we know is the redshift of light well and the force of gravity if you think about it so there's an easy and rational explanation for gravity and for cosmic expansion and uh, Apparently, I'm the first one in history to ever get it. Well, I doubt that, but the first one 
hopefully that might be heard. So this style of expansion for the maintenance of sustaining of gravity means that there is no end to the universe. It's expanding into an infinite dimension. So it isn't possible based on what we what we know now for the universe to just disappear. It's fixed and I'm sure that it always was. Well it may be possible to extrapolate back to some zero point since the universe couldn't exist without accelerating expansion at an incremental rate of little c and so it must have begun with just a tiny whimper. Um, my gut instinct is that the universe had no beginning just as it could never have an end. We could have some hope from the James Webb Telescope but they don't acknowledge anything but a Big Bang and they will work overtime to make it fit within a Big Bang and cite evidences, evidence of a Big Bang, but we know that it will probably only be used to parrot Einstein, parrot Einstein propaganda, so we probably won't get anything out of the James Webb. And as a parting shot, I'm sure the CMB, Cosmic Microwave Background, does have some meaning, but it isn't the imprint of a Big Bang. It's something else. So with that, I'm going to stop this video and hope this time that I've uh, created a hit that people will be able to understand it. They will respond to it and more people will come and see it because this is the most important thing to have happened. Uh, well, some would say in world history for a very good reason. We need to stop believing in the fraud of the Big Bang and start looking at the truth. Okay, so this is Al Fu signing off. Thank you very much.